So next up is, you guys ready? Yeah. Gather Education. Good afternoon. My name is Pat Oanthos. I'm the CEO and co-founder of GatherEd. And with me is Shonak Patel and Chris Mortensen Live, uh, equal co-founders. Gather Education is a virtual classroom technology platform and marketplace that enables teachers and students to work online and interact online as easily as if they were in a physical class. Without any use of hardware technology that's complicated or uh, difficult user interfaces. Anywhere, anytime, on any platform. So, we'd like you to have meet Greg. Greg is a high school teacher in Massachusetts, and he's been asked by his superiors to start moving his classes online because they're out of space and they've got budget issues. So Greg, however, has been saddled with technology that's quite old and outdated, but yet is considered state of the art. And that technology is Collaborate uh, by Blackboard. It is considered state of the art, and it's used by many, many universities and classes for five students or more. But when you look at this, you've got to ask yourself, how on earth can anyone teach a class interactively and manage this user interface simultaneously? So Greg was quite dissatisfied, and he found us. So let's go into the GatherEd class and get a sense of what this is all about. So I'm going to stand in front of my Microsoft Connect. I'm going to calibrate as a teacher. And now I'm live in the class, moving around as if I was physically there. The idea behind this is that you've got physical presence. And let's talk a little bit about the technology and what this means. The technology is the Microsoft Connect, which animates me fully. So if I raise my right hand, it raises. If I raise my left hand, it raises. If I move my chin up here, it'll do all kinds of things. Now, part of it is also the, the background we've got here is a little complicated. But nonetheless, we've got this notion of presence. The second thing is my iPad, which is controlling the classroom. I can control PowerPoint, Blackboards, interactively, and other capabilities as they're coming down the pike. And lastly, the students are coming in with nothing but a browser, an internet connection that uh, Greg was running has been running classes with 0.25 up and 1.25 down. And basically, we actually have uh, universities testing this in England right now, and our servers are here in the US. So very low bandwidth. I would, I would challenge any video chat service to equal this in terms of bandwidth capabilities and scalability. So uh, guys, I'd like to uh, introduce you to everyone. Uh, Chris, could you and Greg say hi? Hello. Hi there. Great. Um, so we are going to run a little class for you. Um, it's an interactive session. Uh, the class is a simple one. Uh, it was an acceleration uh, motion class that we ran yesterday. Before we start, I'd like to get a thumbs up if you don't need any more review or thumbs down if you want more review. And remember, only I can see your response, so don't feel shy. OK, I'm not a very good teacher. I need to do this again. OK, so uh, what we're going to do here, we've now got the student view, so you can see what the student is seeing. And what I'm going to give you now is uh, a story. And the story is a very simple one. I'm walking down the, a, a road, and I see a well. And the well, I want to know how deep the well is. So uh, can anyone tell me, raise their hand, and tell me what that how to do this and how to solve this equation. Great. That is Greg, I believe. I can't see it because I would be the teacher. He's the student in this case. Um, so Greg, uh, yes, what's your answer? Well, you could drop a rock down the well, and you could time how long it takes to get to the bottom, and you'd be able to calculate the depth of the well from that. Excellent. OK, now would you mind uh, writing that equation on the board, please, so everyone can see it? Sure, that would be the distance is equal to one half of the acceleration times the square of the time. Excellent, great. So we've just run a really simple class, not trying to make this very complicated. And now what we'd like to do is move to a new capability we're showing for the first time. A physical classroom is fine, but what really gets interesting is if we can start inverting the classroom and create an inverted model where we can actually run breakout sessions and let the students participate on their own and have the teacher participate really as more of a guide on the side than a sage on the stage. So what we're going to do is move you to the dev environment right now. I'm sorry? Free drinks? Oh, that's right. Sorry about that. Um, so <laughs> I didn't hear. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're actually show you how this works uh, from the standpoint of the teacher. Uh, breaking out the class into individual sessions and then hovering across those classes to actually help those students conduct their class. Okay? So what we're going to do now is uh, run that up. So you see the breakout window on the left. I'm, I control that from my iPad. We click on that and then we actually see the students and we can actually move them into different classes. We can create as many classes as we want and as need to. 
Uh, they don't all have to be in the same class. They will all be allocated. And when they are allocated, so to speak, or moved, we can also do it based on competency and other heuristics that might be available to us. And when we do that, then we'll, we'll actually, the student will actually allow us to, we can now, as a teacher, jump between the different sessions uh, in real time. And at, we have full voice capabilities as we're moving between these different paradigms. Now, the student, however, gets a notification that's saying, you're being moved, OK? Like, you know, so it's not abrupt, because otherwise, literally, you just all of a sudden show up in some other room. It's a little unusual. OK, so we'll go ahead and do that. And now we're actually in a different classroom, right? And so what I'd like to do is, uh, in, in closing, is actually have Greg, who is the high school teacher who's been testing this, actually share some lessons learned as we carry forward. Greg? Sure. <clears throat> well, two main lessons I've used here, uh, learned to use and gathered in my classes are, first, that when a product is very simple to use and very easy to get started, the technology can very quickly take a backseat to learning. And my classes can occur as if it's not even there. The learning curve that I've had with Gather Ed has been really on the order of two to three minutes, and that's both for me and for my students. And because Gather Ed is so closely replicating a traditional classroom experience, my students already know our classroom norms, and all of my skills as a classroom educator have immediately transferred. And I've learned that this is a really important key to a successful educational technology. <laughs> the second lesson I've learned has to do with the connect and the power of presence. When I first started using Gather Ed, I figured that the Connect would just be a gimmick. I thought it would be pretty cool, but I didn't think it would be very useful at all for teaching and learning. But I discovered that I teach a lot more with my hands and my motions than I had previously thought. It was really the first time I'd ever seen myself moving in real time while I was teaching. Uh, and my students reported feeling more engaged and feeling more of a personal connection, knowing that, for example, when I placed my hand on my chin and said, hmm, that's a really good question, that I really was putting my hand on my chin and I really meant it. And the greater than expected engagement uh, made my virtual review sessions really popular with my students. And I've even had students ask me to do extra review just for fun, which is truly mind boggling to me. Uh, but I've been very happy overall. And Pano, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you. So we're, um, we're, we're entirely funded on our own at this point. We, are, we do have a term sheet from Angel Investment, and we welcome your questions. And Greg is available for questions at this point in time. Awesome. Let's hear it for Gather Education. Uh, and in fairness, any uh, VoIP issues probably have to do with the uh, room here. So a little bit of garbling probably has to do with the number of Wi-Fi devices in the room. So guys, why don't you step over here yep. and um, hmm. questions. I mean, this is some far out stuff. What do you guys think? What problem is this solving again? So the issue is online education, which is where the, all the movement is. If you're going to work collaboratively, the stuff that you have for collaborative is really pr pretty poor. And it's been around for 10 years. Okay. So the, these online courses end up with, can end up with thousands of people. What, what is your scaling for, not technologically handleable, but what, 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 what do you well, think? Well, a classroom like this could easily handle 1,000. But in terms of a real-time experience, mm -hmm. Um, you know, I don't think that's the best learning environment, but the cool thing, it doesn't matter to us. We can scale it to 1,000 or not. It's, it's video game technology. It's been around for a while. It's the good news. And it's also very low bandwidth, so it'll, it'll go anywhere. Uh, we're moving very little, very few bits across the network. Does, does only the, does the teacher have to have a connect, or does, uh, does all, the, all the participants have No, that? they do not. They can just have a browser. They can run this on an iPad or Android phone. They can run on anything. Uh, the teacher has a connect. Now, if you want to have two connects running, you can do that. And that and then would be more, even more kind of you know, collaborative, like for you know, uh, mediation sessions and so forth. Hmm. No, I think this is a great uh, version 1.0. I'd love to see version 3 or when you have 3D holodecks and when you really truly have the, <laughs> the uh, experience. And we're not that far away from that. No, we're not. Right. No, the camera is getting there. And, yeah. and uh, what we're finding, though, is interesting. I thought the avatars the would Google be. Google glasses, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you can just imagine uh, the possibility. Well, and not yeah. to mention. Uh, there's no reason this couldn't be walking on the Acropolis, you know, yeah. and showing, you know, uh, or That's visiting the, the Louvre. Say. Yeah, because we should also have now have the, uh, the video experience in this. So you can now, uh, uh, you know, go with people into virtual worlds. Well, the, the, um, it's really easy for us to pipe video in. Um, so that's, uh, again, something that we've done before. 
Well, I, I didn't actually see any lesson planned. Or do you, do you support like how do PowerPoint show up if, if you even use those things? And these things you can so load a PowerPoint so up. It just appears somewhere on the, yeah, on the blackboard. Exactly. And, and, and so from the student view, I noticed they were able to kind of zoom in on the blackboard. And can you can you hit on other women in, in class too? Is that a feature that's <laughs> you will be able to actually click on their Facebook profile. Does it all you think about Stefan? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to replicate the educational process. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Can, Can you I throw spitball, your spitballs <laughs> at your friends? No. Yeah. Um, how, how many screens behind the teacher can there be, and how do you control, if you can have multiple ones, how do you control that? as a teacher? So um, we're going to tile them, much like a tiling facility, and you'll be able to drag them and move them around. Uh, they're basically, in technical terms, they're JPEGs. It's very easy for us mm -hmm. to manage them. And we can also put them on your desktop and save them down to your file, um, file system if you want. So you can actually take the black whiteboards and blackboards as a student and put them down on your desktop. So you're thinking like minority report, like I'm going to pull in this and then pull in that. <laughs> yeah, well, when I teach, I have a web browser up behind me, and I'm just doing surfing the web. But, I, you know, when you're at a conference or at a TED, they have uh, ability to put three different things up on the stage at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's the ultimate teaching experience, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to control that many uh, different things going on at the same time. I mean, you know, when Sullenberger did his speech, they, they played a multimedia presentation of his first two minutes of that flight that landed in the Hudson behind him while he was talking. It was really interesting. Yeah. So how do you sell this product? Like, do you, you sell directly to teachers or...? Or is yeah. it even at that? Or how do you even? Yeah. Business yeah. people, you business people. Or how do you charge for it? As <laughs> so well? um, we're going to charge <laughs> transactionally. Um, we actually have okay. tutors who want us to handle the billing for them. The good news in the tutor market, it's very disaggregated, and it's not. It's been always very local, and now you can actually get excellence at a level that you couldn't get before, and have tutors actually have worldwide <laughs> capabilities. To us, this is probably in the same phase that the blogging platforms were a number of years ago. So you actually can create your own persona and excellence well beyond the. Ivy League halls. Think of it that way. You actually, as a teacher, in fact, there are a number of teachers that we're talking to right now at a very esteemed institution who actually look at this as a way to actually accelerate their presence beyond uh, the universities. Interesting. Jose, any thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I, I can look at it as a designer. I'm a graphic designer, and one of the challenges in design education, and I was discussing this with somebody from a design university's physicality, that you can't replicate people in a room thinking, sketching, and doing all that stuff. And this really begins to make inroads into solving that. So there's an answer for you in the audience in terms of, I'm curious what other uh, educators would do. I teach also twice a week live on the internet. With a, with a staff, it's awesome. Uh, with, on the This Weekend Network, without a staff, yeah. Uh, it's awful, yeah. but it's a lot of work, and you have all these dashboards, and you screw up. So I do see the application in the future, but I agree with you that it, it's, it's an early vision of what's possible, and I'm, I'm positive on it. Great. But we should also ask Greg. I mean, he's here. He teaches I, with it. I mean, are you working with any of the bleeding-edge universities to, to do this at the university-wide and make this a brand, that you come and sit in an actual class every night and get your MBA that way? Well, we've actually had a, a very esteemed university approach us about an exclusive in, for their executive MBA program. Could you do reason. MBAs versus designers and have <laughs> violence? <laughs> you could do it in the classrooms. You could actually, you know, war with each other. <laughs> Screw you, MBAs. Oh, wait, excuse me. There's children <laughs> in the audience. Awesome. Let's hear it for Gather Education. You. Well done.